Of course, this is vendor neutral, so I purposely, you know, took out the type of vendors uh, who um, do these types of uh, enforcement. So if you'd like to discuss those after, I'd, you know, be happy to do so. So edge enforcement, right? So these NAC appliances are connected to switches. They have policies. You manage them, command line, those sorts of things. A lot of times in these situations, too, you have to put these at various locations within the network since there is no necessarily network awareness of what's going on on that first entry point. Lots of devices, potentially expensive. What does that look like? So Mr. Packet, you know, comes along. Boop, boop, boop. Who's at the door? Uh, I get it, honey. Yeah, may I help you? Hey, Mr. Absor, I'm Packet. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to see your daughter, Oracle. Oh, really? And then the, you know, the, the wife comes along and says, I command you to ask him if he'll be nice to our daughter. Uh, you going to treat our daughter well? Uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll be nice to her. I command you to ask him why his zipper's down. Why is your zipper down? Oh, oh sorry, sir. Uh, it's fixed. I didn't mean anything by it. Sorry. No problem. I'm okay now. I command you to ask this bloke for his medical certificate. Uh, is your medical certificate broke? Not broke. Bloke, the kid, you idiot. Uh, oh, is your medical certificate, you have your medical certificate with you? Uh, hmm. My med no, I don't, sir. Sorry, I, I think I left it at home. I don't like packets without their medical certificates. Ah, no medical certificate. Date denied. You're out of here. Now, in this scenario, right, he didn't get into the system, but had he had his medical certificate or a machine certificate or another type of piece of information that they're looking for, he potentially would have gotten in. And he might have had to do this at various steps along the way or maybe not. They did that initial check on him, and after that, he got to go in. I did my remediation. Edge appliance. So far, so good? Is this making sense? Do you guys like it? <laughs> the big circle, what we just talked about. And then the uh, network and switch based. So a lot of people, um, there's a lot of talk about the 8021X and uh, firewall rules, intrusion detection. This is what a lot of people think of when they, when they think of NAC is 8021X. Port on, port off. Are you in, are you out? Are you allowed or not allowed? So what does that sound like? So packet runs up. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, may I help you? Yeah, Oracle and I are going to the prompt. Whoa, whoa there, buddy. You can't just run in like that. Hold on a second. Yeah, but we're going to be late. I got to go. I got friends waiting. Wait a minute. Let me just go check something. Uh, you pack it? Yes, sir. All right. You're on our calendar. But um, you can't come in this way. You're going to have to go in through the garage. Go, go around the corner there and through the back end, and you'll find her. So client NAC, or uh, network NAC, I'm sorry, 8021X specifically, is on or off. Allow, disallow. That's pretty much it. The other thing is that, you know, a lot of people talk about authentication and such. 8021X, while it can carry authentication information, it is not an authentication mechanism. So it can only carry the information. It always has to go check somewhere else to see if, oh, is this guy authorized? Are they allowed to get in? Okay, I checked, and now I'm going to VLAN you. You don't come in this way. You're not going to have open access. I'm going to send you through the garage. Now, you'll still ultimately get to Oracle and do whatever the hell you want, but, at, hey, I put you down a network segment. I made sure I checked certain things, and after that, you're in. The other thing about this is that, you know, all the devices essentially have to be aware of this and have to 
you know, be able to support 802.1x. And that can be expensive. You know, nowadays, you're going to have to upgrade much of your um, switches, routers, etc., to whatever the company's latest code is or code that supports 802.1x to then have it work all the way around. But again, it's on or off. So the inhibitors, and now I kind of didn't even, um, <laughs> I like doing stupid stuff like this, is you put a little topic like hybrid, and then you ignore it the rest of the way down the presentation. So, you know, hybrid would be, you know, whether it be a combination of those types of systems or, um, you know, using other mechanisms to check. So maybe you do have the 8021X when somebody does control, alt, delete, and puts their information in, it goes back, checks, oh, okay, you're all right, but you only get this port turned on and away you go. You know, you would have that maybe in conjunction with the client NAC. Okay, I'm gonna also check the endpoint. I'm gonna make sure that, that they are healthy. So it costs a lot of money, lots of boxes, and potentially that's not simple. So, oh man, I gotta add all these other devices in my network, then I gotta manage them. And then what about policy? What's your policy? Is your policy different from remote users who are coming from trusted devices, internal users coming from untrusted devices? Or is, do you have you know, the single same policy for all access methods? Because that's what the corporate is. Users sometimes may you know, not know what's going on. Oh, damn, there's this thing being loaded on my laptop and it's doing, do I, do I check yes on this? Am I supposed to allow it? I'm not sure. Oftentimes users don't even have the rights necessary to install components. Or they may have ActiveX disabled. That's the corporate policy. So how do you check those sorts of things? And then again, the, the policy management and, and making it granular, making it um, specific to users. Or again, is it you know, the entire system that gets it? Oh, here we go with another misspelling. N triple A C. God, he just adds these letters just haphazardly. Doesn't even know what he's doing. So network and application access control. Now, does any of these three previous NAC types discuss anything about the application? Do anything about you know what it's going to do to the application, what it's supposed to get from the application, the type of information they're supposed to see not only just see, but then potentially take with them. You don't want them downloading your financial spreadsheets and then dun, 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 see you later. Can't do that. Not, not at least these days. Maybe four or five years ago, before all them laws were in place. So what is unified application access control? So it, it, it combines you know, network, of course, which is very important. Uh, you know, that's why these other systems are in place, because you don't want pe bad people on your network. That's not good. But if you can still stop them from getting the application, well, that's even better. And so you can have such things as um, you know, an edge device, a secure access manager, which is actually one of the things I'll show you today during the demo, which will you know, provide policies for remote users. It also has policies for internal users. So application control, access control. Yeah, they may be on your network, but they still have to authenticate. You can still incorporate 802.1x if you so desire, if that's what you want to do. And then potentially having an internal device, and I apologize again for the logo, make, you know, ignore that. Um, for your either internal users or even public facing websites, making sure that people only get to the locations they need to, not only just by segmenting them on a VLAN, but also narrowing down the type of access they have within the application itself, whether it be an absolute path or a specific folder or types of documents. Being able to manage all this, again, you, you know, the same policy can be pushed to both devices, your, your device that allows external users to come in, your remote users, and your you know, internal device potentially could have the same policy. I don't know, I, I say remote, but I've been trying more and more to not even say remote users anymore, or remote access. It should just be secure access. Because you know, remote is kind of becoming an old term. We're, we're remote now, but we need secure access to our systems.
And it's 